Yo, yo, I'm Mixed Miles and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a little tiny look at a very, very small 12 inch mile I picked up um, from Hampshire, um, that sort of way. I was out on the out on the look and I found a, a nice sort of vintage lawnmower, which I think dates to around about the mid 1930s, somewhere in there. Um, it's a Ransoms, and not many people see a lot of these machines about. The Ransom Ajaxes are quite common, and they made absolute hundreds and thousands of them. But this is a Ransoms Atlas Mark One, so I'm very, very happy to pick up a Mark One. Um, I have I have seen one other Mark Two with a grass box uh, for sale on eBay, but this one hasn't got a grass box, and it has been sort of just left in the back of a shed for a number of years. The idea of this little video is to try and see um, if I can get it to run because the or work because the cylinder doesn't move; it looks like it's jammed up. And eventually, what I'm going to do is strip this machine down into bits and bobs. Um, and then it'd be a nice little winter project for me to, re to restore and what have you um, and bring it back to its former glory. That's the idea. As I say, the Ransom Ajax, um, there's loads of those. I've done one or two videos of those um, before and there'll be a video up in the top um, corner now of my restore or my Ransom's Ajax. Um, I think that was a Mark phew, Mark 3 or Mark 4, I think. Um, but this is a Mark 1 Ransom's um, Atlas. As I say, you don't see many of them. If anyone does have a, um, an uh, a grass box for one, let me know, uh, email me up. I'm very, very happy to uh, to do a deal with you if I can get a, a, a good steady um, grass box. Um, but apart from that, um, it's done nothing other than just sit outside and it's looking for a bit sorry for itself. So I thought I'd bring it on in today and uh, we'll try and clear the bench and try and get the cylinder to at least move. Um, and if it will move, then I can then, that then gives me the justification to start to strip it down, take it apart and clean it all up and get it looking really, really nice. And then it can just sit there in my little collection that Mrs. P absolutely loves and adores. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mother Man, Man, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, it's completely free to do so, and set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload my video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, quick sip of my old coffee, and go and fetch in this um, Ransom's Atlas Mark I. Right, let's go and find it. I have just cut my grass, although it doesn't look like it, but it was covered in leaves. Uh, I used my Hater 56 today. Um, I need to repair my fence too, there's a hole in my fence. Let's get that sorted. Stop the peeking eyes. So let's put you just down here somewhere. Plop. And I'll just go and get my little tiny Ransoms Atlas Mark 1. It does want a bit of work, to be fair. It does want a bit of work, but with a bit of luck, we might be able to do something with it. So it was just thrown in the back of a shed, okay? Let's look at them sexy little handles. Look, them handles is sexy. Uh, the problem with it is that when you roll it, uh, the cylinder doesn't, doesn't move. The cylinder's locked up, okay? So that, that's a problem. Hopefully nothing too, too drastic inside there. There isn't normally, these machines are pretty good. So, so a quick little look around. It may get a bit windy in the field because it is very blowy today. So here you go. A little tiny um, Ransom's Atlas Mark One, 12 inch ball bearing, it says there. Uh, really nice little handles. I need to get some new handles made up because mine are cracked. So there'll be new handles to be made up. Conquer, that'd be a job for you on your lathe. But look at them handles, they are cool, man. There's not a lot to these machines. Um, they were designed uh, to be easily operated and what have you. But it's got all the nice little cover on the side there as well. It is missing a grass box. It does want some new rollers. I'm not sure if an Ajax box will fit it, but from what I'm seeing, the Atlas box was slightly different compared to the rest. So there it is. Nice little vintage lawnmower. Let's get it indoors. And uh, we'll see if we can't take the side box off and adjust, adjust that cylinder just to try and get that to run. And if we can get it to run, then we can start the stripping down process and bringing this little tiny cookie back to life. Okay, so up on the bench is my little tiny Ransom's Atlas Mark I, uh, 12 inch ball bearing. I am so happy to get uh, a Mark I because normally it's a Mark IVs, fives and what have you. But as I say, this one, the cylinder does move. What's that in there? Oh, there's something in there, a raw plug. Well, what's going on there? I think they might just be little tiny oiler caps for his bearings, yeah they are. Um, but the cylinder, it will move. 
it will move, but it does seem to be resisted. Well, that could be a quick video. Let's get a bit of oil in there, shall we? Let's pop a little bit of oil in them bearings. That's the first thing to do. So right down in here, some little tiny covers. Is that open me or not? That's not even open. Um, some little tiny covers. Where's me? My little tiny ones. I know I filled one of these up just the other day. I think it was that one. Let's just put a little tiny bit in there. I dare say, it's had nothing for a while. I'm going to leave that away. Let that run down in there. Just to give it a bit of a, a bit of a happy birthday, so to speak. There's plenty of all going in. I'm going to tip it back a bit. I'm just going to oh, it like that. So we're not actually getting any any drive off of that one there. So I don't know if it's not gone gone and missing here. That's trying to. There you go. I think the best thing to do will be just to have it off in here. Quick little gander in here. See what's going on. And then we'll. Uh, it is going. Look, of course she's going. It slips now every now and again. Let's put a bit of oil directly on there. I dare say these um, um, this thing has got to come off. It's already it's already much freer. A little bit of oil. Look at that. That's going. Okay, so let's get up into here. Are you trying to use an adjustable at first? Now what I don't want is anything to snap. That's what I don't want. Nothing snapping please today. Especially on a Mark 1. Oh, it's nice and loose. We like that. That's because it's got a, um, a nut the other side of it. <coughs> Let's get a bit of penetration lube on that just to help that along on its day, just behind it. That's it. And then I'm gonna stick that in behind. Not gonna be the easiest thing to do. assuming it's going to be Whitworth stuff in there because because 1930s I do have Whitworth sockets but no Whitworth spanners unfortunately I wonder if I make Pete's got a set oh, that seems to be moving there now it's moved First uh, reveal. Oh, it doesn't look bad, bad. The chain wants a bit of work. Yeah, Whitworth. It's not locked up, locked up. It's, it's, had, it's had an oil in its time. <clears throat> but that I want to go in the old Evapo rust to uh, clean that up. Definitely trying, but it's just not it's just not as free as I would like. I wonder if it'll now run on the actual, on the actual lawn now. God, 
it's stiff. Right, let's take it out on the lawn. We give it another bit of an oil. Because what it is, there are, there are some bits of crud just in here. And I would like to uh, just try and clean them and pick them out. So let me just pick them out with a, a few uh, picks and what have you. Because all that grass sat inside there is, is going to do it no favours at all. So a quick little clean up and then um, we'll take it outside and just see if I can't get it to, just to run. If I can get it to run on its own. There you go. Um, but that tells me we'll be good to go for a, for a tear down. And if we get it all torn down, all taken apart, we should be good. Now the only thing that concerns me is it's got these little tiny bracing bars here. Now I'm not quite sure how they come apart. I don't, I don't think they do. So I need to, go, need to go a bit careful with that. I may have to take the bars apart from here and then treat these as one piece. Uh, Cause these are braced and they look like they're, they're not designed to come off. So. But we'll go from that and take it outside and we'll try and uh, give it a quick little push across the lawn, see what it does. And if it's any good, then it uh, should be taken apart. Right, there you go, all set up. So now it should spin. So it doesn't have that lovely um, ATCO noise that when you um, tick it back, it goes tick, tick, tick. doesn't have that, which is a shame. But look, we're spinning. Oh, and we're cutting. Look at that, baby. Oh, what a lovely action, too. What a lovely little action. That's lush. Let me show you. Let me bring you on my old camera. I'm going to do it one-handed. In fact, I'm going to take you off for quick release because it tends to be a bit sturdier on the old handball. Right. Have a look at the old cylinder. Let me bring you down a touch. Ready? Look at that. Lord, she's cutting better than uh, better than my mower does. Absolutely beautiful. So the grass is absolutely soaking wet at the moment. Absolutely soaking wet. But there's nothing wrong with that cylinder. Oh, I was trying to let a little 12 inch stripe look, bless it. So there you go. So the cylinder all works as it should do. Look at that, isn't that lush? So back up onto the bench. Let's try and get this little baby taken apart so we can do her up. So that was nice. Uh, little Ransom's Marquis now actually uh, all freed up and, and moving as it should do. So I'm gonna try and locate my, uh, my Whitworth sockets. They should be all in here, there they are. So I'll be using a combination of Whitworth and uh, um, adjustables. Now, lots of you may be saying, Mick, don't take it apart, leave it as it is, blah, blah, blah. But I, I'm a kind of person that actually likes to have um, my stuff restored. It's, 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 it's just my own preference. I, I like to see them looking a bit newer. Um, but it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I, and I fully appreciate that. But it, it, it is just me. Uh, I like to see machines looking somewhat somewhat better than what they um, were when I first picked them up so as I say it is just me um, so first of all I'm trying to remove these handles first off that's going to be my first my first um, exercise now I have just put a load of penetrating lube on most of these nuts and bolts and bits and pieces and I'm not expecting too much of it to actually shear off or snap because they are, they are quite hefty it's going to be the smaller stuff I'm going to have problems with. But we'll see how we get on. <coughs> and hopefully we won't, we won't have too many issues. But we shall see. So I'm going to run the back here. That's where I am. And I'm just going to go to try and loosen up some of these handles. Now if I feel much resistance, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll apply a bit of heat. That's now starting to spin. So I'm not putting the sun on this end to begin with. I just want to get, get that to spin just to try and release some of the gunk up. Once I get it spinning, I can then apply some onto it to try and get it to uh, get it to, to free off. And what you want to do is just start them off, get them moving, 
And as I say, if you feel much resistance, just back off and go and do it back up again. Otherwise, you're just going to snap them off. But predominantly, these would not have been impacted on. And they come off with relative ease. And a good thing with these threads are, uh, I can put those into a Vapo rust and they come up just like the day they, they were first, uh, first bought up. As I take this apart, I'll be cataloging where stuff goes. So that bolt there, I know that to go onto there, so I'll just put that back onto there, just so I know, because this may be apart for quite a while yet, um, as, I, as I start to treat it and, uh, and strip it down. Got one over here to do. Now that's just going to be a complete driven one through this bit of aluminium here, so that's going to be a bit more, bit more trickier. And we'll see how we get on. There goes. So the bulk of this is all going to be nut and bolt nut and bolt you won't see me using any impacts on this let's just try and spin that round a touch and we're going to bring that round once i get the handles off um we'll be in a, in a bit of a better situation nice little sign on there ransom sims and, and jeffrey's on there made in ipswich england lovely uh, so this one here is one to be spun So it's moving, as I say, just, just get it spinning first off. Once it's spinning, it will just get rid of some of that rust. Then we can put an adjustable on there. Once the adjustable's a bit, a bit happy to go on, you can then just lift them off. And so these are all original nuts and bolts on here, so it's worth, it's worth keeping them and doing them up. These are all Whitworth stuff. one here to do and this is the one that holds the um the handle on bit of shock treatment there goes the handle dropping down let's go a bit carefully i don't want to break that plate on there if you break that plate on there then we're going to be in trouble so just go easy if the faster you spin that bolt the more heat will go through it and that's when you have a few problems so just take your time with it i don't want my handle to drop on top of my gopro So there's one, and we've got one on the other side just to finish off, which I left in there, which is nice and loose now. And there goes a WD-40 for a bird. Off comes a bolt, and that will free up the, the handlebars, so they can come off. Off they come, beautiful. They look lush, all sprayed up and green. We've got the, uh, the Mark One sign, that's gonna come on out. Look at that look, absolutely beautiful. And uh, even just uh, with a little clean up, you, imme you immediately start to see the, uh, the design in there. Just for a little tiny clean up, it's just, it just starts just to bring it all up. Make it really nice, this is just a, a watery bleach, that's all that is. Cleans it up, now the, the, uh, the Ajax is a silver. I need to do a bit of research on these. I think these are all green, but we should see if they're silver, it'd be put back to silver. So I'll do a bit of research on the original colors. See what it comes up like, but look at that, that lush. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice. Ransom's Atlas, Mark One. I'm super happy with that. So that's the first part done. Handles are off and um, uh, the back plate is off. I want to go and move forward now and go to do the front roll assembly. So let me just get sorted out. I'll be back to you in two seconds. Okay, so now just start to remove the roller assembly. And on this side here, we've got a genuine bolt. On that side there, it looks like someone has just put a gutter bolt in there. But what I'm finding is, as I'm trying to undo this little tiny bolt here, um, you can't get a socket in there because of a cylinder. And that, that nut starts to spin. So a quick little trick, just get a flathead screwdriver Pass it alongside the nut. As it goes, the nut goes around, just, just pinch the screwdriver up against it. And that'll then hold it in place. And that will work the same for tightening it up as well. And then that way you can then remove uh, that nut and bolt without having too much drama. Uh, so this is a proper Whitworth nut and bolt on here. Uh, so far we've not had no resistance, but I'm waiting to do this one here. That's gonna be the one that's gonna cause me problems, I reckon. Um, 
the little nut and bolt there. Give that a little gentle tap just to free it up. That's good. And I'll come on the other side. And then we do the other side. Now this is going to be a bit more, a bit more of an issue for me because it looks like a genuine one. Uh, a genuine, sorry, a, a more modern one. And it looks to be about a 10 mil. Which straight away is, is screaming to me. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna snap on you, I'm gonna snap on you. But we'll just see how we get on. Um, let's go have a I've got nothing too heavy. We'll try a small ratchet on there first with a 10 mil. Let's see what that does. I don't go too too high up. That's a nine. Let's grab a ten. Let's see what we get. Of course, not a ten. It'd be a 12 then. I thought it was a 10. It's a 12. Let's see what that does. What are we getting? Oh, it's coming. So the roller should just come straight off. Because it's it is only these brackets that hold it on. put a nut and bolt back on just so I know where it's going because all of these have to be put in a vapor rust anyway so the bracket comes straight off you see there's a bracket and then the same on the other side let me bring it up a touch you can see what's going on the same on this side once this one comes off the roller it will just come off on its own oh, that's quite a tight fit on there Mickle Mouse Go a bit gently here There you go, so there's the other bracket to see. That comes off, these, these tend to wear over time and get a bit tight, so um, what you find is, is just to get a file in there and, and just file them open just a touch. Uh, I want a little tiny, um, I had a washer on there definitely, and it had a little tiny nut, didn't it, on there as well. Let's just put them on. Oh, I haven't damaged the threads, so that's good. That's on, and then my roller is all here. Now the roller has got two spacers by the looks of it. It goes flat washer first, and then the spacer on top. Right, so next stage I'm guessing is to remove this center piece here, this rod, that could be good. And also remove the, the, the bed knife as well. So I might go for the bed knife first. Let's turn the machine around. So, now these are, should be quite hardy bolts. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of penetrating lube, bit of oil on there as well, just to help them out. It just helps them. And the bed knife can then come off, hopefully. It's quite a tight fit in the socket, that too. I'm going to struggle to get in there. But we'll see what happens. I, don't, I really, really don't want to damage it. No, that's not going to go on there. 100% not. So I might have to find something to fit that. Because um, they are a little bit hidden in there here. I could whack it in there, but I don't want to be doing that. So let me just find a socket to fit in there, which would be a bit better. They're quite a thin wall socket in there. Doesn't leave a lot of room. So let me just find something to put on there, and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Right, I'm about to use a bit of hammer treatment, I'm afraid, just to, just to, try, and get the, just to try and get the socket on there. I think we're on now. Yeah, we're moving. So I don't know what, what socket, what, what um, tool they put in there. It must have been quite a thin walled one. Because my Whitworth would only, would only just fit in. So a bolt there. Now, I don't know if there's a nut the other side of that. I suspect there to be one. A quick fill down through there. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. 
there's a little tiny nut and bolt there so that's good so we can take that off in a minute and then we'll uh oh, we can put that back on the bed knife in a bit so all i'm doing is just putting the socket on just facing it and then just a gentle tap just so it catches the bulk of it Once I know it's got the bulk of it, we can then just try. Oh no. So what I might have to do here, I might actually have to get my grinder and just grind a little bit of the surface out on the side here. Just a touch. Just so I can physically get my uh, my socket in there. I don't want to be putting adjustables on there because I think that's just going to just slip it off. And then we've, then we've been a whole a whole world of pain. I think. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Just gonna round it off. So I'm gonna get my grinder, just put a little tiny slit down the side of here, just so I can get a socket in, and then uh, I can then get better access with my uh, with my socket. So I'll get that done and try and get those um, nuts and bolts all finished and undone. Right, I've got I've got three out of the four out, and what I've found is is by slackening this off slightly, I can get in the side of here to do that or, or on the other side. So I'm gonna try and do these two. And that will then sort of make that a bit more wobbly and I might be able to sneak the, so the socket down the side of it. That, that seems to be the best, the best method of working. So this is a bit I've not been looking forward to um, because this is where it's gonna snap if, any, if anything. Got one moving. Now what I'm just checking as, as I'm doing, I'm making sure that nothing else is, is moving. And just by doing that, that should give me just enough uh, bracketry moving. You see how, how much that moves? I can now get a screwdriver down inside here and that, that will just move the casting ever so slightly. So let me undo this side here, if I can, without it all spinning, which is what it wants to do. Or did that stop? No, nope, that went. So we now undo that one. So now I've got all this movement, you see. Whereas beforehand I had none of that. So I've got quite a bit of movement now. My fingers, Mick. See how much see how much movement I've got. So now, by rights, I can possibly just open this up a touch. And that might just give me just enough, just to sneak that, that socket in. So I've got movement on the other side, you see. There's quite a bit of movement there now. That's a theory. You always get one bolt that's gonna hold you up, right? It would be nice to try and just get this to move out of the way a bit. We're nearly there, guys, we are nearly there. So it might just be a question of just literally a bit of love. There goes, what was that? That's a deflector. Let's try that. Now it wants to tip up every time. So, no, I've got to go a bit further now. I've got the brass reflectors now come out. That's all in one piece, which is good, not rusty. So now, I've now got her. I'm going to remove the cylinder. Take that out. Because this is still fixed. and still quite tight. I need to somehow remove, release that, that roller. And by, release, by removing the roller and that, uh, that sprocket, uh, will enable me. So what I'm first to do is just uh, loosen up this um, this cylinder, which will appear a different size, no doubt. And then uh, that'll be the cylinder out of the way. With the cylinder out of the way, you know we start we're starting to break it down a bit more now. So, which is 
which is good. That one. Oh no. Right. That one fits, but that other one doesn't. How weird is that? So, right, I'm going to start to wind these up. I'm going to go slow because there's a bit of spring underneath here. Just don't want to go mad. So this is how you raise and lower the cylinder. size bolt baby take that out and then the same to do on this side but this side is a different size let me just find the right size for that because that's uh that's just spinning around and around and around and then we'll be a bit closer to getting that cylinder out and hopefully right so bit of a stumbling block going on um i can't remove the sprocket on the other side because some bright spark has put a weld on the sprocket to the shaft so therefore i can't remove the sprocket to remove a chain and all that sort of stuff because somebody's welded it. So I've had to attack it from this end. I can remove this side plate, which is cool. I have got a very, very slight broken spring, but I, I can probably just get one out of a quo cast, we'll probably do that, there's no drama. Um, so I can manage to get the cylinder half out of what, of what I need. But as I say, you cannot physically, going down over this side, spin it around. I've been sort of trying to suss it out. Down here, look, let me take it, take it off the old stand. I cannot physically um, undo my main sprocket because there's a nice little modern day weld on there. Someone's either broken the shaft or done something to it. Physically, can't get it off. Someone's welded it. Um, so, so that's a bit of a bugger for me. Uh, this one here is not well, as you can see. So I am sort of stuck what to do with it. If I can try and now remove most of the material this way, that'd be good uh, with the roll and stuff. I should be able to re remove most of it, but it just means I can't physically remove uh, the shaft without that chain coming off. Uh, but we'll see. I might get to come all, all this way. We'll see how we get on. What I'm now going to do is spin, it, spin this back round again let me put you back on your perch so I can see where you are. Move my handlebars out of the way. And what I'm going to try and do is have it round this way. I've got a little tiny bolt here to undo, which is part of the ratchet system. Uh, let me just show you. So down here, there's a little tiny bolt here. Look, undo that. That's what grips the actual shaft. And that's your ratchet system. And undo these two. That starts to come out and then you can start to split the roller. I'm hoping the, that the shaft will go that way. If a shaft goes that way, I can then take the chain off uh, and we'll, go, we'll do it that way. But yeah, someone's had a little, a little bit of a play with it, but um, hopefully this, this, this won't stop the project and turn it into just a quick little spray job. Hopefully we can then still move on. So undo these, this bolt here to remove this little tiny shaft and then these two, and then I'll bring it back once I've done that. Okay, so I have just removed a little tiny square bolt from in here and just taken out these two small Whitworths um, out of here and out of here. So that will show the little tiny differential dogs that are in here. Uh, I want to take a good photograph of these before I do anything. That one seems to be stuck by the looks of it. Um, there it goes, it's moving now, there you go, a bit of, bit of free movement. Um, it could be a third there as well, yeah, there's a third there, so um, so that's my dogs. They, they all want cleaning up, I'm, I'm going to give a good clean up first before I do anything, just so I can take photographs so I know the orientation for later on. Um, and then what I'm hoping to do is actually loosen this up, see if I can get that to move and to come off. And if I can get that to come this way, then I'm hoping then I can bring the rest of the rest of the roller this way. If I can't, we're going to be stuck because that, that is welded the other side. And to find another shaft um, to fit on that cog is going to be difficult. Why do they weld it up? Leave me a comment in the comment section as to think, why do they weld that up? Did something snap? Or what was the trick? So uh, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And I'll uh, clean this up here, take some photographs, I know exactly what's going on. And then uh, I should try and then remove this centerpiece here. Um, once I've done that, um, 
I can withdraw that and then try and withdraw the roller this way as well. See if we can't then get the roller out. Once that roller's out, uh, we may be able to do something the other end, but we shall see. So keep watching, I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, so a little bit of heat, a little bit of tapping, and I'm now starting to withdraw this shaft out of um, this section here. Off that comes. So there's my little tiny dry. Look at that for a lovely little cog. Look, that's lush. And then I've got the dogs inside here. Now what I'm hoping is to try and split this roller. There you go, we're making a bit of space, we're making, making a bit of room there. Uh, that should come. That should come straight off, Mick. Come on, baby. Is that gonna come all the way? Yes. Oh, beautiful. There you go, so there's the roller. So what I'm gonna do, is just gonna pop that little tiny shaft in there, just so we know which, the orientation of that for later on. It's gonna be apart for a little while, something's just dropped. What was that? We don't know pieces dropping. Something just dropped on the floor. I don't know what it was, here it was. A little tiny, little tiny Whitworth um, nut, but that's got nowhere, it doesn't belong nowhere. So that's that one. So the next question is I've got to undo the same little tiny um, square bolt on the other side, wherever it's gone, it's up here somewhere. A uh, little tiny like cotter bolt, which sits on the shaft here on the other side. I've got to undo that. Once I've undone that one, I should then be able to bring this shaft all the way back. Um, if I can get that, that roller off, I can then possibly do something with the other side of it. And then that might give us a little clue as to what happened. So I'll give this shaft a good clean off first. Give it nice and clean so it, so it will actually run because that's quite, that's quite, um, quite rough that is. Um, but if I can get that roller to come here, then I might be able to do something the other end. But uh, at the moment, until I can get that off, we are well and truly stucky pooed. Okay, so I've managed to remove the, the second part of the roller off the shaft. I've just got to remove this little tiny um, ratchet off as well. That's got to move. At the moment, it's a bit solid, so I might want a bit of heat and a bit of uh, lubrication. Once that's done, I've then got to try and remove the shaft out this way um, and slip the chain. That may involve removing the cylinder chain off of here first, but as I say, there is no chain split, so can't get a, a tool in there to split to actually split the chain myself. So I'm not sure how we actually put that chain on there. Uh, there seems to be no adjustment um, backwards and forwards, but I will figure it out and when I do, I'll let you know. So get this next cog off and try and move the shaft out and then try and slip the chain. If the chain slips lovely, all well and good. And then I wanna figure out why that's been welded up. So I wanna look under, around the back of it to see if that's actually uh, been if it's been broken or what's gone on, what I may do is then just grind that weld off and put that in a vise and try and spin that cog off. If I can get that, that cog to spin, uh, we could be on a bit of a winner here. So let me um, do those couple of bits and I'll come back to you when I've done so. Right, so this is where we are. It's been a bit of a pickle, I must admit. I managed to remove the bed knife bolt and I had to change that to a, to a flat head because I couldn't get a socket in there. And I didn't want, to, didn't want to ruin the bed knife itself. So bed knife's now been removed. Um, and I've removed everything off of this way, uh, roller wise, but I cannot get that off at all. It will not budge. Um, I've heated it, I've oiled it, heated it all, I've whacked it in a vise, I've done all, so all that sort of good stuff, uh, as of yet can't get it off. So this is as far as we've got today, uh, but I'll be doing a part two on this because the video's gonna be about 14 hours long. So leave me some comments, what do you think I should do to get that out? My theory is I'm gonna remove that weld, I'm gonna grind that weld off and try and figure out why he welded that up. At the moment, I don't yet know. Um, but if I grind that off and then try and remove that, um, that sprocket cog, which should be left hand threaded, I'm guessing. Um, once that comes off, I can then slide my shaft out that way, and then I can then just put that into a vise um, with the flat side, and then just give that a darn good welt, and that should then come off. That's the theory. That's my plan. Give me a yes, no, and a comment if you think that's right. Uh, why do you think he welded that up? Because it shouldn't be welded, so give me a shout why you think that should be welded up, because it shouldn't be. And also my chain uh, also um, had no links in it. I cleaned it up and there's no links to, to remove um, or you know the, the split link. So that's a thing. So I have to just, um, when I go to put it back on is maybe try and find a chain to fit that and put a split link in it. Um, hopefully I can do. 
that'll make it easier. I've got to remove that cog as well. Uh, I'm guessing that's left hand thread as well. If it does look like someone's tried to pull it beforehand, I don't believe they're pullable. I think they're threaded as well. So that's whereabouts I am. So um, hopefully in the next couple of videos on this little ransom um, atlas, um, I should be a bit further along. Uh, but, but we'll just see how we get on, guys. You know, it's, it's always, always a learning curve. And if you've got any tips or tricks for me, then let me know in the comment section down below. But I'm nearly there. Once it's all taken apart, I can then spray it all up, make it look nice, put it back together, and it should go back together a lot more easier. So yeah, any tips for me, leave it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button or whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, much more importantly, take care easy.